All right. Uh, we now speak to Free World Initiative founder and CEO, Labukhang Mutau. Uh, just your thoughts on this incident, what you perhaps have heard from the family or representatives thereof. Good evening. It's actually very sad to see that children at such a young age are having to deal with such type of violence. School is supposed to be a safe environment, a peaceful environment for all. So for somebody to go into school with the fear that something will happen, and as you said, the, 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 it is a growing trend. Bullying, bullying has become a huge problem within school. So school has become a very scary place for children to be in. Mm. And, and, you know, I'm glad you raised the issue of bullying because it that is exactly where it starts. And there are all forms of bullying that take place. Um, uh, recently, we experienced that as a family and just uh, trying to speak to the school about it. The school actually shrugs its uh, shoulders and says it bears no responsibility of what happens outside of the school, but it starts within the school. So talk to me about... Um, Firstly, constitutionally and legally, what should schools be doing to safeguard our children? Okay, all schools should have a bullying policy in place. Um, but even taking it, that is just setting the standard as to what is acceptable and what isn't, and what are the procedures to be followed if bullying is occurring within the school and within the school grounds. But besides that, there should be more education that is going towards what exactly is bullying. You know, there are certain organizations, including the Peace Corner that runs uh, six on the 16th of every month, they say, color your, your community orange, which is trying to increase awareness on bullying. Most people don't even realize what bullying is. They just think children will be children, and this is just normal teasing or just normal growing pains, whereas bullying is a serious matter. It's a big matter, and it is a gateway to gender-based violence mm. when they are older. So policies need to be set into place. Education needs to be done with both learners as well as educators, and then stretching it out even to the community and parents so that parents are also aware of what bullying is or isn't. And then the steps should be taken to ensure that these policies mm. are put in place. And what happens in the instance where a, a, parent, a parent or parents repeatedly report such behavior to the school and the school either does not uh, take note as in completely ignores uh, the parents or the child uh, and in cases where the school would even say something like a chirping is 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 understandable and i'm talking against uh, a child being physically attacked uh, does that make sense if a school says oh no and, and i i raise this against your point that people perhaps really don't understand what bullying is so if a principal of a school for instance says oh no this uh, child received a, a beating because they were chirping mm -hmm. and then also comes back and says but actually there was no beating that occurred Okay, there are different types of and different forms of bullying that occur. Maybe we can just start it off there, you know. There is the verbal, which is the name calling and mocking. Um, there is the exclusion, you know, not allowing somebody to be a part of the group. There is the the physical, which is the most known one, which is the beating. It is emotional abuse. And now we even seeing something that has become more and more uh, prevalent is the cyberbullying, which is more, even more um, predominant because somebody can hide behind a username and not even know who is bullying them. Um, I don't think saying that, oh, this is just a chirping or whatever is an excuse. No form of violence should be accepted in any way. As parents, we send our children to school knowing that they will be safe and looked after and it is a responsibility of the school and the, the staff members within the school to ensure that children once in that ground are safe and protected. We also have to start this policy of believing, you know. If a child says that that's, somebody said something to me and it made me feel uncomfortable, that is enough for that to be escalated and addressed and addressed on both sides. We have to address it from the side of the victim who is being bullied, but also look into the assistance and help that is needed by the bully. What is causing this person to be a bully? What is happening within their own home in 
environment that is making them this aggressive is something that we also need to look mm -hmm. at. What are they watching? Um, what, what, what influence do they have in the home? What are the type of influences that are coming into this child's mind? Look at it that broadly. We may be starting tackling the issues that we are facing. Mm. And it's a very important point that you raise because I'm just thinking in this case of this learner uh, from uh, the Oliphant family, it should have escalated for one child to stab another in the eye and actually, uh, you know, hit an optical nerve. The, 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 the violence could not have just uh, gone uh, from zero to this point. They sh it should have been escalating. What responsibility do the teachers, the school, the governing body and the provincial education department, the national education department uh, bear? How can they have protocols in place? to deal with this, uh, the bully and the bullied. The first step is that no one can watch somebody else being abused and keep quiet. They become part of the problem if they keep in quiet, if they're not reporting. There are places and numbers and institutions that can be called in if by escalating to the school governing body is not working. I've had situations where parents even call us up as FWI and we escalate the matter to the district, provincial and even national level if we are seeing that the school is not doing something about what is happening within their own school grounds. There are laws in place, the legislation does have uh, the steps that needs to be taken and as I said, every single school needs to have a bullying policy in place that needs to be followed. Parents also need to know about it so they can know what are the steps that need to be taken to ensure that their child is in a peaceful and safe environment. Mm. Could it be a criminal case? And it's very sad to talk about young people facing that kind of sanction, but in a case where it is serious, that can cause a permanent physical uh, damage. And it's, it's so unfortunate that the emotional and psychological damage uh, is sometimes unseen and will probably remain unseen for years to come. I want to understand the civil and criminal culpability that is borne by uh, the actors in play. It is definitely a criminal case, even though the child is a minor, there are steps that need to be followed. So this case should have been reported and then the, the steps needed to be taken to ensure that this child, um, you know, that the law takes its course. But as you're saying, also in terms of the civil side of things, stuff needs to be done. We need to make sure and find out what is the trigger, what is causing the bully himself to act in this way and then get him also some form of psychological support. So the psychological support would go both to the victim as well as the bully to ensure that we are dealing with this. At that age, it would be amazing to see the formative action. You know, working with this young, the, this young person who has been the aggressor to kind of help them deal with their feelings, deal with their frustrations in healthier ways. I feel we do not talk enough about how are healthy ways of dealing with emotions? Anger is an emotion, it is healthy emotion, but how do we deal with it in a way that we are not harming ourselves or anyone else? Um, uh, that needs to be focused on. Um, the, the, the law enforcement does need to be brought into this, and then there are institutions that could also help in terms of the psychological help for both. We are talking about our teddy bear clinics that are doing an amazing job. They will bring in psychologists to help these children out, but not only the children who were involved in this, but also their peers so that we can start discussing what is happening, what is causing this aggression, what is leading to all this violence within such a young age. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Always a pleasure. Free World Initiative founder and CEO, Lebohang Motau.